This is going to be hella fun. I have all my stuff right there. Well, I guess my GoPro and my stuff, but my turbo's in the back, in the trunk. I have about 12, 13% more of ethanol. So I did drive it to work the other day. Hopefully that's enough for me to fill up back with 91 so that we can start the upload going. Pretty much when you're starting new with a flex fuel tune, you have to do everything from 91 I get, or 93, depending on where you're at. We need to get all the knock control, the air fuel ratios, everything pretty much ready on 91 so we can see and make sure that the car performs really well on 91. And once how many, five, six, seven, or however many revisions are needed to ensure that that tune is good, then we move on to uh, an E30, E35 tune. I'm gonna go fill up a little bit more on 91. And we should be Gucci. That should lower it down like another 2%. Dude, oh, let me rise this up a little bit. After driving on 91 for like a few days, jeez, man, 91 is so much slower than an E30 tune. I'll do like a 50 roll in third gear. It's 23 pounds of boost. Not, it's not what I'm used to. <laughs> not saying that the car is like fast, but dog. Going from an E-Blend to like straight just 91 sucks. I was going to come to E-Man shop a lot earlier today too, but I completely forgot that I should have probably checked my K-Tuner because I'm one of those guys where I won't check it if it's up to date if i have the latest software well i guess my last tune was last march like right around my birthday the nice thing about this is that i live like 10 minutes away from his shop maybe 15 if i get every red light all right well getting straight into it taking out the turbo isn't really that hard to do you need to take out the intake you need to take out the turbo inlet piping we're taking out the upper supporting mounting bracket the one that holds the the latch down just to give us a little bit more room to work with the inlet piping only because it is tough to get out from the small space you have afterwards you're pretty much working on the down pipe from there you just taking off the o2 sensor the heat shield any miscellaneous part that's connected to the turbo from the down pipe and sure enough the turbo comes out looking at the turbo up close it is still in pretty good condition considering it's been on the car for 65,000 miles. And like looking at the RV6 turbo right after seeing the stock turbo, there is a noticeable size difference. But where we did see the bigger size difference was next to the 271 W2 ball bearing turbo. RV6 turbo is on the left, the W2 is on the right. You can clearly see that there's a difference between those. So I could only imagine how the stock one looks next to that one. He just happened to have a W2 laying around. So we wanted to compare the sizes next to each other. The nice thing about the RV6 Turbo is that it comes with every single thing you need to make the install happen. But looking at the RV6 next to the stock Turbo, there is definitely a difference. It looks more of a difference internal than exterior because, to be honest, it doesn't look that much bigger than the stock one. Like, it looks bigger. Like, it is bigger, but it's not, it's not massive how you would think. The nice thing about this journal bearing turbo is that it has the same power curve and characteristics of a ball bearing GTX 2860 Gen 2 turbocharger. The compressor, the turbine, those are definitely bigger than stock and this definitely is no slouch. What I like about this turbo that I didn't know I was going to like, it, you can't really tell the turbocharger is on the car unless you know what you're looking for, of course. The stock heat shield still fits. It pairs up really well with the down pipe, obviously, because it's from RV6 as well. And the 271 piping with the intake just hide it. So when you pop the hood, it looks like all you're seeing is an intake. Afterwards, we pretty much started flashing the car to its base map tune that John Vega provided, and we get the night going. Overall, the installation was very easy. I am very satisfied how E-Man did everything done to the car, just like he has done my previous installs. Well, it's that time already.
data logging for the first 15 minutes. So right now it's 4.29, we'll do 4.45. All we're really doing is just driving around town, stop and go traffic for about 15 minutes. And then from there, you go on a highway cruise for about 15 minutes. And then the last step is you pretty much do a third gear pull from 2,500 RPMs all the way to red line. And I'm gonna be doing those in three different data logs. So the first data log is gonna be the one driving in the city. And then I'm gonna hit stop. And the second data log is gonna be driving on the highway. And then I'm gonna hit stop. And then the third data log is gonna be me driving, obviously at the third gear pull. And that's it. So I think roughly this probably takes me 40-ish minutes, you know what I mean? From leaving my house and then getting back. And also at the same time, I haven't hit boost yet, so I can't really tell you if the car feels different right away. I've been just driving normally, so we'll find out when I do that third gear pull. That should be enough. Let me get to... All right, boys, let's see how it is. Oh, lag, 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 lag. That went up to 7,000 RPMs. Whoa! Whoa! I'm going to make sure I uh, let John know about that. Not sure if that was purpose, but 7,000 RPMs? Jesus! You know what, I will say, I have heard of some people raise up their RPMs to about 68. I mean, he does have the, the R tune does go up to 6,800. That was only 19 PSI, by the way, from what I noticed. That definitely was a lot better from when I was on stock turbo at like, I don't know, medium boost. Okay, I got questions. I'm definitely gonna hit them up. But I, if I do remember correctly, I do remember some people raising their RPMs to about 68 to 7,000 RPMs to get the most benefit out of the turbo. Damn, that was hella laggy though. <laughs> that's not a stock turbo, that's for sure. All right, well, that's gonna be the end of the video right there, guys. Still waiting on another revision, that way we can see how much more the car is going to be going. Obviously, the first revision, it's just a base map. It's gonna help, I can still drive the car, I can go to point A to point B, however still do a pull if i really want to normally with these e-tunes the first revision is always going to be like let's get the ball rolling let's see where it at where it's at and then where i need to do the tweaks so obviously 19 psi that's not a lot but at least i got to experience how it is on my, my car finally so but anyways guys we finally have the big turbo on the car i'm just as excited as the next person so all we can really do is just wait um again it's just going to be the waiting game and I will keep you guys posted. I'm not gonna be doing a vlog every single time I get a new revision because I feel like that would just be a waste. This is the first one you guys are gonna get. The next one with the car, I'll probably do one once the 91 octane is done and I start putting E85 in it. So that way you guys can get a first reaction with an E30 blend or however much John wants me to put. And then obviously the final revision for the car. I'll see you guys in another video. Be safe, happy new year. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a good day, peace.